Hi, my name is Meg. Welcome to my channel, Cybersecurity Meg. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about how I managed to get my CISSP at just 24 years old and my five biggest tips on how you can get your CISSP. So first I'll tell you a little bit about myself. Like I mentioned, I am 24 years old and I do hold a fully accredited Certified Information Systems Security Professional Certification. I acquired my certification in late September of 2020, so while everything's still fresh in my mind, I wanted to go over and review some of my best tips on how you can get yours. So here are kind of my five biggest tips. I don't think they're super repetitive as to some other videos that I've seen. A lot of these are, you know, not just like, oh, read a book or watch a video. I tried to actually put a little bit more thought into these and be a bit more creative. So hopefully you'll find them to be useful. I have them written on my phone, so excuse me. <laughs> so number one, my largest tip, honestly, that I can give you is to find a study buddy or a study group and preferably someone who's going to push you to do better, to work harder, to think outside of the box, someone who's going to support you along your journey. Because let's be honest, getting the CISSP is not easy and it's going to take a lot of your time. Uh, I don't want to exactly say the whole blood, sweat, and tears cliche because I didn't get any paper cuts from my book, so there was no blood, but there was definitely some sweat and tears over the months, so you need to have someone who's really going to encourage you and help you along the way. One of the biggest caveats I can say to this is I use the Certification Station Discord. I'll put a link to that down in this, the description box below. Honestly, this was the biggest help for me in getting my CISSB. This uh, Certification Station Discord, we have at the moment like 6,500 members and a lot of them are actively pursuing cybersecurity certifications, namely the CISSP. So there's 24-7 back and forth question asking between members, we're giving advice. There are a lot of people who have passed the exam who are sticking around to give pro tips and to try to help those who are still studying for the exam. So this is kind of one of the best ways that you can get your feet wet and start learning the material, reviewing the domains, and partnering up with people who are like-minded individuals. In the Discord, there are people ranging from super young, who maybe have never worked a cybersecurity job, to people who are much older and they're the CISO at a large company. So you have the entire spectrum covered of everyone that you could possibly want to speak to in cybersecurity. And frankly, it's one of the best resources that you can use, so I highly recommend looking into this. Number two, I wrote down diversify your resources. So I know if you do a quick Google search or if you go on Reddit, whatever you want to use to get more information, you'll probably see just the normal resources listed off which I think the most popular right now are probably the Official Study Guide book by Wiley Cybex, the All-in-One 8th Edition by Sean Harris, and then some of the top um, like recorded videos. So Th Thor Peterson and Adam Gordon with, I think he's with IT Pro TV. And so my tip is to Try to diversify your resources. Don't just pick one book and only read that one book and then not do anything else. You need to be having, I would recommend picking one book as your main book and then having a secondary book that you kind of fact check yourself with or get more knowledge from. So for instance, obviously the official study guide is much shorter than the all in one book. So I use the official study guide as my main resource, and then I use the all-in-one book to supplement and kind of get more information out of it. I didn't feel that the official study guide thoroughly covered things like Kerberos, single sign-on, um, and several other topics that were big. So when I went and looked these up in the all-in-one book, the all-in-one would kind of be a trade-off and it would have a lot more information on topics that the OSG wouldn't have and maybe sometimes the all-in-one book wouldn't have enough information but the official study guide or the OSG as it's called would. So 
that's one thing I recommend is making sure you use a plethora of resources. I would also recommend, like I said, having a study buddy so you're actively discussing and engaging on the topics until you can hold a um, conversational kind of back and forth with someone about these topics that you're reading about, I wouldn't say you're well prepared enough. You need to be able to know enough about them that you can kind of hold your own and be proficient in speaking about them. You don't need to go super deep. You don't need to like memorize all the key lengths and the cable lengths and cable speeds and blah blah blah, but you do need to be able to know why a certain WAN technology is better than another WAN technology, or when to use WAN and when to use LAN. Those kind of things are important. So if you can, um, try to di diversify your resources. There are a lot of free resources out there. You can check YouTube for some free videos. I know Rob Witcher, I think his is called Destination Certification. Um, he has some great videos. So. There are a lot of free resources out there. Just try to mix them up. That way you're getting a whole bunch of different perspectives, different um, depth levels of information. Like I mentioned, one resource may only cover surface level. Another resource may go too deep. So it's good to kind of combine it up and see what you find to be best. So number three of my tips says, accept that you're not going to be excellent at all domains and try to be honest with yourself. So what does that mean? For me, it meant that I sucked at networking, which is domain four, and I wasn't particularly well experienced with domain five either, which is IAM, Identity and Access Management. So instead of just reviewing all of the topics that I was already great at because I have years of experience working in them, like security operations and risk management and vulnerability management and these kind of things that I really drilled into what my weak areas were, which for me, like I said, was networking because I don't really deal with it. And then I am, again, because I don't really deal with it. And if you're not familiar with something, if you haven't been hands on with it, if you haven't researched it, how are you going to be amazing at it? You have to just read a book or talk to your colleagues about it or watch videos about it. So I really had to be honest with myself and be like, Meg, you're not very good at networking. Stop looking at domain seven, which is security operations and go look at domain four, which is where you need to be because that was frankly, like I said, my weakest topic and I really needed to concentrate on it to be able to pass the exam. Number four, I have, have healthy study habits. And I think this is really, really important. There is such a thing as overstudying. If you're not taking the necessary breaks and letting yourself kind of relax and rejuvenate from filling your brain with so much information, you're gonna burn out. And burning out is not good, really not good, because if you get burnt out, then you're probably not gonna wanna study. You're gonna lose your motivation you're going to put off booking your exam or maybe even keep pushing your exam back. So you need to kind of acquire some healthy study habits. You need to be eating healthy, trying to exercise if you are capable of doing so, try to at least incorporate some sort of normalcy in your life, maybe hanging out with a friend once a week or something like that. Of course, this gets a little bit different the closer you get to the exam, but overall, I would recommend not just putting your face into a book and keeping your face in that book for months on end. Um, try to really plan and map out your studying. Know where your weak areas are, put your emphasis on them, make a roadmap of the information that you need to cover before your exam and when, on what day you should be covering that information and stick to it. Having a plan is half the battle. Of course, the other half is actually sticking to the plan, so those kind of go hand in hand. But nonetheless, if you're not being healthy, if you're not taking care of yourself, if you're not relaxing or sleeping well, you're just doing yourself a disservice in the end. These are things that are necessary in order for you to be successful. And last, I have written down, consider getting a more entry-level certification first. Now, for me, this was applicable because uh, like I mentioned, I'm 24. Um, I am a full CISSP. I'm not just an associate of ISC squared. 
So I, I have a master's degree in cybersecurity, which accounts for one year of experience. And then I have three years directly working in cybersecurity and one year before that working in like general cloud IT. So um, for me, I attained the CompTIA Security Plus in late June of 2020. And frankly, that probably covered 30, 40% of the content for CISSP. Granted, I don't want to confuse you because the CompTIA Security Plus, of course, is a more entry-level intermediate certification. And frankly, it's a little bit more technical, especially if you get those questions that are like, hey, fill out or configure this ACL to allow the firewall, uh, blah, blah, blah. Um, you're not going to see those questions on the CISSP. The CISSP, if you don't know, is a very managerial exam. So. The level of difficulty, the like cognitive processing that is required to pass the exams are different. Security Plus, you can memorize a lot of things. Um, it doesn't go very deep. And the CISSP, it's not that it goes deep. I don't think it does at all. But it requires a different mindset. And so the mindsets between the two exams are completely on opposite ends of the spectrum. But the Security Plus does help you get that solid foundation of fundamental basic skills down that I do think are necessary in helping you pass the CISSP. So you can consider that. I did. For me, the Security Plus was my first ever cybersecurity exam. And I did really well on that exam. I think I got like an 840 or something out of 900, I think the scale is. So that really bolstered my confidence, and it didn't take me that long to study for the Security Plus. So when I finished studying for the Security Plus, I was like, you know what, why not? I'm still in quarantine where I'm at here in Europe, so why don't I just start studying for the CISSP? Altogether, it took me like three months to acquire both the Security Plus and the CISSP, which I recognize is a bit uh, more quick, like more expedited than most people. Some people take up to a year. So don't base my experience on what yours is. It's completely different. But nonetheless, those are my top five tips for passing the CISSP. Comment down below if you have any questions, if I can help you with any resources, or in general, if you just have any questions about acquiring the CISSP. In my future videos, I'll be talking about a lot more things in cybersecurity getting a master's degree in cybersecurity, what it's like being young in cybersecurity, how to get into the field, trying to empower more females to get into the field, all of those things. So stay tuned and stick around because I think it'll be an interesting ride.